So I had an interesting question about that because um, uh, some companies seem to be six, really successful, but the style of leadership is quite, I suppose, more on the autocratic side. I'm thinking actually of Steve Jobs there because that was uh, sometimes critiqued for being quite a, uh, obviously a very successful company, but a very, I, I guess, quite on the, more, maybe more on the autocratic <laughs> side. Can you explain um, what was, uh, is that just a question of some leadership styles fit in certain very specific molds and just happen to be successful? Or is it there was certain, because it was, a, you know, it was being deep in that new innovation side, that's a style that's required? What's, what, what's, what do you interpret the Steve Jobs effect being in, in your leadership well, paradigm? <clears throat> based on our data, and, yeah. and one of the things that we do, uh, that you asked about what our firm does, uh, we at the current time have about a million 360 degree feedback instruments yeah. pertaining to about 75,000 managers around the world. Yeah. And one of, the, one of the wonderful gifts that we had in that, within that data is that for some of those data sets, we had company performance measures. So we could, we could correlate leadership behavior and company performance. What we've learned is that there are, there are very, very few managers who combine being really, really good at, at some leadership competencies or behaviors mm. with also being really, really bad. Okay. In fact, only about 2% okay. of mm. leaders have that combination of being really good and also mm -hmm. being bad. Mm -hmm. um, we, know, we know most certainly that in the main, 98% of great leaders have that pattern of having well, three to five competencies at which they're at the 90th percentile. They're not good at everything. Uh, nobody is. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're very good at a handful of things. Steve Jobs was really remarkable. He, he was at once uh, a possessor of some wonderful leadership strengths. Mm. And also, he had some behaviors that really got in his way. The strengths, luckily, overshadowed yeah. the weaknesses. But that's very rare. Yeah. And my own opinion, for whatever that's worth, my opinion is that, that, that Steve Jobs could have gone down in history not only as one of the great product innovators and, and people who kind of sensed what customers really mm -hmm. would ultimately want, but he could have also been known as one of the really great leaders, mm -hmm. and that won't be his legacy. Good point, absolutely, yeah. He, he will not be thought of in the same breath as, you know, as the other notable, mm -hmm. notable leaders. So there's a difference between great ability to execute and great leadership. Yeah, and, and, and his passion for design and his passion for making things simple and his passion for paying attention to the details uh, and his ability to kind of view the future and to see what yeah. the future was going to hold for uh, phones and tablets and, and uh, watches and yeah. uh, other things. It was, it was really extraordinary. Yes. Uh, and... Uh, Luckily, for Apple's sake, yes, that outweighed the, sure. bad, the bad behavior. But not many people are as vision, visionary to compensate as that. Only two yeah, percent that we've, we've seen. Right. It's it's a rare thing.